we're doing a video here on the ultimate PDW. I did a video on this gun before, but this is an update video because I made some changes uh, to the components, uh, made the ultimate PDW even more ultimate. Uh, it's a completely custom build by myself. Uh, I made it after some frustrations with the SIG Rattler uh, being so unreliable and finicky and just heavy and just an all around terrible gun. So I figured I could build a better gun and I did right here <laughs> much better gun and this video is to talk about some of the things I've changed out to make the great gun even greater so this is a very lightweight 300 blackout build I have an 8.3 inch handsome barrel on it and I have the Maxim Defense SCW stock which shortens up the buffer tube because the buffer is actually integral inside the uh, bolt carrier group and then uh, just 20 round mag right here. And then we get to the front where we talk about the upgrade. So right on the end here, you'll see the CGS Hyperion K. Waited like a year for this friggin' thing, but man, is it worth it. <laughs> this is such a huge upgrade. Before I had the OSS 762Ti titanium can, and that was just so heavy. Even for a lightweight 762 can, it was so heavy. It was at 15 ounces, plus you needed the muzzle device, whether it be a brake or a flash hider, and that was another two or three ounces on top of that. So you ended up having an over a pound on the end of my gun uh, for the silencer, and it was flow through. It was also pretty loud, but this gun now has CGS Hyperion K. This thing is only 10 ounces. Direct thread right on the end of the barrel. No muzzle device needed for this thing. 10 ounces, 3D printed titanium. There's even an end cap that you can unscrew right here and it will put a low back pressure end cap on here. So it'll be very similar to the OSS can that I had. I haven't tried that, I do own it, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, I just did some shooting with it and I'm gonna roll in that footage now so you guys can see. Uh, whenever you change stuff on a gun, you wanna make sure that it runs well. I uh, undid everything. Changed the hand guard, pulled off the gas block, so different silencer, all that stuff can change the function of your gun. So here's the function check right here. So right on the end here, we have the CGS group, Hyperion K. Uh, waited about a year for this thing and finally got that out. Super duper light, it's only like 10 ounces. And uh, so we got that on the end. And then also upgraded to this carbon fiber. Jag composites. So uh, once you change anything on a gun, you want to test it out. So we are gonna put one round through it, subsonic ammo, and just see if we get locked back. First thing you wanna do on any gun when you change anything, basic function, see if it locks back. Looks like we have lock back, we do. Now we're going to see if it's cycled. Uh, I'm shooting this Underwood ammo, subsonic. Uh, this is like $3 a round or more. It's, it's insanely expensive, but it expands like an insane amount. Uh, you can see there's ridges that go all the way down. You can see it right there. It goes all the way down to the base and uh, it's subsonic ammo. 194 grains, I think, uh, and it expands ridiculously big. We're going to put a few of these in there and see if it cycles now and locks back. Alright, so now we have three of these subsonic, super expensive Underwood ammos in here. Uh, pretty sweet cartridge. We are going to see if we get it to cycle and lock back. back and cycle. Awesome. Alright, so we have one last function check to do with this gun. This is a very important function check that you should be able to do with your 300 Blackout gun, especially if you use Subsonic as a self-defense round because let me tell you these are not infallible uh, it's very hot so i'm holding it with a rag 
Uh, this is the Hibernian K. Uh, they're not infallible. They can break. I've had two silencers break due to manufacturer defects. I have my OSS can, the welds inside, just totally broke. Um, and then I had an alignment issue with a barrel and uh, I was actually uh, fine for a little while, but uh, the threads were slightly misaligned and eventually it threw one wild in one of my silencers and uh, I had a baffle strike. And other than that, even just besides defects, these have big holes in them. And if you actually use these things for self-defense, you can go outside. If you drop this thing in the mud, drop your gun in the mud, uh, stuff like that, you'll notice whenever they do testing like that, they always cover the muzzle. Uh, if you get a bunch of debris inside this, it's gonna change your impacts dramatically. Uh, it's going to make it very unreliable, uh, and this thing, you're going to want to take it off, uh, most likely, if you get a bunch of debris in this thing, especially big rocks, it could be dangerous for your silencer and your gun. Um, so just something as simple as that, your gun needs to work with your self-defense ammo, with or without a silencer. If you have one of these guns and it's not integrally suppressed, uh, it needs to work without it. So this is a very important function check we're doing right now without the silencer, subsonic ammo, because I do use that. I also use supersonic but I don't always have it on me or in the gun, and I may need to fire this gun without my silencer if it breaks. And the lock back. Guys, if you're a 300 Blackout PDW, you cannot do this. It is a piece of trash. Your gun needs to be reliable in all circumstances. Uh, that includes if your silencer breaks, you need to take it off and you only have subsonic ammo on you. Uh, it's a personal defense weapon. It needs to work in adverse conditions. That's an adverse condition. Uh, this gun as it's built, you go back to that video, uh, zero tuning whatsoever, subsonic, supersonic, with or without a can, 100%. Good job guys this thing's awesome so the gun's working beautifully that was just so much fun to shoot this silencer is so quiet and so light the gun's just so pointable it's oh my god it's awesome and adding to that humongous weight savings i just shaved off like seven or eight ounces just by changing the silencer now we have this jag composites carbon fiber handguard that I changed out my other heavy aluminum handguard. This thing is incredible. It only weighs 2.7 pounds. That's with the mounting hardware. There's a skeletonized aluminum barrel nut, and then you have titanium screws right here. They were just normal bare titanium. I painted them black because, look, I need things to match, right? <laughs> and. Uh, just this carbon fiber is just fantastic. It's super rigid, super strong, great lockup. Uh, I absolutely love this handguard. And if you guys are in for a lightweight handguard, looking for one, man, Jag Composites makes a phenomenal lightweight handguard with this carbon fiber. They also make a more beefy one. This is the ultra light. They also make uh, a little bit heavier one for more rugged use. But let me tell you, this thing is solid. This handguard is perfect for, man, like 95% of people that are gonna be watching this video, interested in lightening up their gun. Even the 15 inch, they have a bunch of different lengths from 15, 13, I think 10, nine, uh, and then seven and a half is this one. The 15 inch only weighs like a little bit over four ounces. It's the whole thing that's with the mounting hardware. Unreal, unreal, it's so awesome. It's 250 bucks for this thing. And let me show you what it comes with. And the handguard even came with this crow's foot wrench to torque it down. And then it came with this awesome barrel nut alignment lug. This little thing is fantastic. What a great idea, it made aligning this handguard, effortless, absolutely effortless. You just torqued it, uh, just literally hand tight, and then you torqued it 30 pounds, 30 foot pounds, a couple times just to get it nice and loose. And then throw this thing on there, torque it between 30 and 50 pounds, and you'll see 
this little nub right here is on a spring and once that pops into your gas port you know it's aligned and you're good to go screw it in six screws and voila you have a 2.7 pound ridiculously lightweight handguard that saved me about eight ounces so i saved about a pound off this gun with just these two upgrades plus the performance benefits uh, this handguard is carbon fiber and carbon fiber doesn't absorb heat very much. Uh, the people over at JAG also said it's extremely resistant to high heat. So they said that it's actually not even a problem if you do some mag dumps with this thing. Uh, it's not gonna all of a sudden soften like plastic will. Uh, they said it's resilient to heat. It's super firm. I don't know if I would trust a peck on this thing, but, or any sort of laser device, but man, is it a firm lockup? It, it is fantastic, perfectly capable of holding my lights and stuff like that. Um, man, I absolutely love this thing. It just transformed this gun and how it feels in my hand. It's just so weightless. It almost feels like a bullpup. <laughs> it's so light out front now. And uh, we're actually gonna be lightening this thing up even more because uh, I have this heavy EOTech on here, which I love my EOTech. Uh, the window is just so big, it's so great bringing it up, it's so ergonomic, uh, the whole setup with this thing. But I do want to change it out, add even more weight savings to this gun. And I'm actually going to go with the Steiner MPS. I, I did a video on it, and it's on one of my pistols. I bought another one for this gun. I just absolutely love that sight. It's so good, and it would be perfect on this gun. This EOTech is very heavy. I think it weighs 11 ounces. That Steiner MPS weighs two ounces with a mount that weighs like one. So I'm gonna save almost a half a pound or maybe more just by switching out this EOTech. Just crazy lighten up this gun. The heaviest part of this gun right now is basically this 20 round magazine. Uh, without that, this thing is just feather light with this ridiculously light Seekins lower you can see it's skeletonized on both sides, super duper light. This Odin Works upper is skeletonized all over the place. Then we have the SCW stock that shortens up the gun so much with the uh, buffer inside the BCG. This is just the most epic PDW ever. Uh, there's nothing store bought that can compete with this right now. Uh, as far as just the best of all worlds. Like the Honey Badger is somewhat close, but you have that very flimsy stock with no cheek weld. This Maxim Defense fixes that. The Maxim Defense guns are heavy. So just this custom build just puts everything that you might want into one gun, one super duper light gun and as you guys saw, it's fully reliable. And you just can't beat that for a bedside gun that you need to trust your life with. You need something that's good in all conditions, no matter what. And yeah, this does it. <laughs>